Father, thank you for today. I pray you for everything you've given us. And Father, I just pray for all these people affected by the fires. Yes, and I pray that uh, you'll just watch over them and just help them to know that they're not alone, Father. And I just pray for all these firefighters that are, are fighting for our safety. Yes, and just keep them strong, Father. And Father, I just pray for the sermon that's about to come before us. Yes. That it'll help to really just cut us to our hearts, Father. Yes. And help all the disciples that are really struggling. And also encourage those disciples who are doing well, Father. Yes. And Father, I just pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Well, it's time for the announcements. You <laughs> gotta have campus guys here. They're fired up. Amen. Uh, first of all, I, did, I, I talked to Lupe this morning. I heard the Spanish devotional went awesome last oh, night. Yeah. So, well, I love you guys there. God is working in a powerful way. Amen. So, so today at 3.30, we are having a first principles test. So Colton of Orange County put together a 100-question test, multiple choice, uh, to, to really test our knowledge of the first principles. Amen? Uh, so that's going to happen at 3.30 today. It's a 100-question uh, test. Uh, it's not mandatory for every member. However, I would strongly encourage you to take this test. Uh, because our, our, our goal and our purpose now is to fish for men and to save souls. If you don't know how to study the Bible with people, then you got to know where you're at right now to improve where you're at. Amen? So that's at 3.30, and we are, there is an incentive. Uh, the, the top score brother, top score sister of teens, campus, uh, uh, singles, and marrieds, if you get the top score of all of the L.A. church, you will get a plane ticket to go to the Mexico City uh, Missions Conference. Amen? Yeah. And uh, if you score over 70... Uh, we, we have these nice golden uh, certificates that we're printing out for people who score over seven. So we're, we're trying to push people to really dig into their scriptures, amen? So again, that's today at 3.30. Uh, the next thing to announce, of course, is our Christmas service next week. Again, it's not here, so if you show up here next week, you're going to have to do the welcome by yourself. You're going to have to sing by yourself, a church of one. Please don't come here next week. We're all going to UCLA for our congregational service. Now, uh, we're asking if you park in a structure, we're asking that everyone park in parking structure number four, please. Uh, we're going to have ushers at this specific location to usher you from your car to the location where we're going to meet at for church. Amen? Now, uh, if you don't want to pay the $12, it is $12 to park in the parking structure. UCLA is not free. Uh, you, you can park in the streets. However, it's a nice prayer walk to the place of our, our, our church service. Amen? So just be mindful and count the cost. Uh, of, of course, uh, next week, as well as our, our amazing service, we're also having our toy drive. Amen? So Metro Heights is in charge of getting toys for our infants. So please bring, bring a toy that you want your kids to have. Okay? Please don't go to a 99 cent store and get a, a dinky little toy. Please, we want, we want to give toys that, that our kids will be fired up about. Amen? So that's next Sunday, of course, 17. Uh, the, the 24th as well, our Christmas Eve service. We're going to be back here for our Christmas Eve service. And I'm excited that Michael uh, Peterson will be in charge of that service. It's going to be awesome. Amen? There are New Year's Eve services coming up. Uh, please uh, listen out for details. We will be setting out details as it gets closer to that day. I'm super excited because next year, guys, 2018 is right around the corner. Uh, 2018, we're starting off with a bang with our winter workshop, amen? So the winter workshop is from the 3rd to the 7th, okay? Uh, the first two days, I believe, uh, the, all the leaders will be coming together. So you don't have to come on the 3rd. Everyone's coming, though, on the 5th is when everyone that will be coming together as a church, amen? I believe this is the first year that LA is doing it with strictly just LA. So it's exciting, there's more opportunity to serve. Uh, if you're not an usher and you wanna usher, this is an opportunity to find a world to serve the church, amen? Uh, so that's the, the, the fifth through the seventh. It is a $20 fee that'll get you uh, registered for the whole entire weekend for the winter workshop, but it's a great time for us to come together as a family, amen? Uh, those are all the announcements at, uh, right now. At, at this time, I'll give it over to John Cloudy. Good morning, brothers and sisters. You guys fired up to worship God today? Oh, man, 
Well, we, uh, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, uh, we really, really do have a very, very special treat. Uh, I do want to let you guys know, uh, today was supposed to be Tristan and Joy's last Sunday, and Tristan was prepared to preach the word, uh, but there was a need in Las Vegas, and so we had to go ahead and send them down there a week early. Uh, we still want to send Princeton and Joy off in a great way. Amen, brothers and sisters? Yeah. So what we're going to do uh, on next Sunday, the 17th, when we have our congregational service at UCLA, we're going to have a room set aside uh, there where we'll have cake and refreshments and a time of sharing for Princeton and Joy there at UCLA next Sunday. Amen? Yeah. So let's all come and let's pack the room out and make sure we... Uh, Send them on to Las Vegas uh, in a great way. Amen? Amen. At this time, I'd like the uh, Gonzaleses to come on up, as well as our new brothers and sisters from the Whittier from the East region to come on up as well. Woo! We're so excited to be able to uh, preach the word in an incredible way with our new ministry in Cerritos. And uh, these brothers and sisters are going to be a part of that, working along with the Gonzaleses to preach the word there uh, at Cerritos College and all of the surrounding Cerritos area. So uh, what we want to do is have uh, Victor and Sonia introduce the new people from Whittier, and then I'd like to have our shepherds come on up, and then let's all go before God together in a word of prayer and ask God to put his blessing on our new Cerritos ministry. Amen, church? Amen. Good morning, church. Well, I'm uh, super proud to have more, uh, four more uh, incredible disciples from the East region to place membership with us in the real sector. Amen? Amen. And uh, the first one is Eric. Uh, I, uh, as you know, I uh, got baptized in 95 uh, in the West region. Uh, he was baptized just a year after in 96 over in the same West region with the same people. So I really have a great, uh, you know, uh, and a, big, uh, a lot of good memories. We have uh, Carla, is, uh, his uh, sister, is an incredible sister, and uh, she's going to sing a special song for us after the meeting. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I hope you like Menudo. <laughs> there is a natural competition right now for the best Menudo, and uh, Carol is already in the semi final. <laughs> $100,000. So, pray for that. Amen. So, that's Carol, incredible sister. And then, uh, Tony, uh, very incredible husband and uh, best friend. Uh, they got baptized 10 years ago here in the LA Church. So, we love them very much. Yes, yes. So, uh, that's it. Thank you guys. And uh, pray for us. personal walks with you, God, so that people can see the hope, can see the joy, can see the families changing, can see the yes. neighborhood changing, God, and really be a light to the entire area, yes. God. I pray that it can be an incredible example, God, of what it means to just really send out a powerful group, God, yes. so that we can all imitate and get over the coast. Of Love you, pray just in name, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Father, I pray that you strengthen this group. Specifically the Cerritos and the leadership that you to give them a double dose of the spirit yes. as they go out and really just 
really evangelize leaders, evangelize the Latin community, evangelize yeah. the English community, evangelize the whole demographic that's there, yeah. and make sure that it's an all nation group, that it shows that you are there, that you're going to be in every single person's sphere, that you're going to strengthen them, that you're going to be the light, and most of all, that they're going to continue to grow spiritually, that they're going to continue to grow the community, and know that God is there. Let, the, let their light shine more than anything else, Father. Yeah. Let the leader, let Sonia, let uh, Victor, just be a powerful leadership that guides them. I know they will, but most of all, just let them be strengthened. Don't let them fall into any temptation at all, Father, but allow them, if they do, allow them to just repent. Allow them to just be able to stay continually focused on you, particularly every single individual there. They're going to be a powerful mission group, and I know that with their leadership there, we're going to evangelize the world, particularly starting in Sharia Father. Thank you for this time. I promise in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Padre Dios, grande y todopoderoso, venemos en tu presencia, oramos que nos des la fuerza de un rostro y la voluntad de un león, Padre, para que vayamos y prediquemos tu palabra, que estés con Vecto y su esposa Sonia, estamos plantando el centro de Soritos, que estés con cada individual y darles la fortaleza del Espíritu para que los guíe en la mente y la tienda en el corazón, pones la armadura para poder alzar tu espada y prediquen poderosamente, logramos todo esto nuestro Señor Jesucristo, amén. Amén. Corey called me, go. 
I'm moving to LA. <laughs> Packed up his car, moved out to Los Angeles, and started across the switchblade yeah. industry with and he's done great things for God ever since. He's now a world sector leader on, in our movement, charged with leading the great city of Chicago. Yeah. And in addition to that, leading probably one of the most challenging mission fields in all the world, and one of the most dangerous, charged with planting churches throughout the Middle East. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But Corey's a mama's boy. Yeah. <laughs> and Corey's got one of the greatest mothers in the world. Yeah. One of the most faithful, one of the most faithful women that I've ever met. She was baptized in 1998. She converted from a Muslim background, professed Jesus as Lord, and like any disciple, God just sends a myriad of challenges in our lives to perfect our faith. Yeah. And in all the years I've known Razira to today, she has never wavered in her faith for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Very rarely do we have the opportunity to be graced by the presence of a hero. Yeah. And today we have that opportunity. And if y'all don't fellowship Wazira and, and just run over there and hug up on her and love up on her, you have missed out on spending time with a true spiritual giant. Come on. Come on. She's been a member of this region for a long time. I want to thank everybody for going over and visiting with her and seeing her. It is so awesome, sister, to have you here today. Yeah. We yeah. love you. We admire you. We respect you. And we hold you up in the Lord. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Y'all ready for communion? Yeah. Have y'all repented? Yeah. Go on and say a prayer right now. We're going to get to go before God as a family right now. And there's power in numbers. There's righteousness in us being together and being united before God. And anything that's in our lives, anything that's in our midst, together, going before God, we can extract it. And so I'm going to have our dear brother Michael Peterson come on up and lead us in a song to prepare our minds for communion. Let's cast off everything that's on us from this last week and let's worship God acceptably. To God be the glory. Come on. Let me do 378 and glorify. 378. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify
conviction that there is nothing in the whole universe that can change anybody more than the cross. Yeah. And uh, the communion time, it is without a doubt the most impactful times and should be for every single one of us. Because this is the time that we forget about everything. And then he's focusing on Jesus dying in the cross for every single one of us. I want to read a scripture in Matthew 26. Come on, bro. Let's go, bro. For Jesus, yeah. it was very difficult to go to the cross. He was about to give up everything they had left, his own life, and suffer immensely for every single one of us. And uh, before that, <clears throat> in verse 39, he got his best friends, the disciples, and then the Bible says in verse 39, Matthew 26, going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yeah. but not as I will, but as you will. Preach. My wife got to share what the cross means for her. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, what the cross means for me is uh, denying. When I saw the cross and I saw how much Jesus denied himself to save me, to save us, uh, I uh, really decided after I saw the cross that I'm going to deny my life uh, to save others. I was very grateful that, uh, that I uh, find Jesus and um, what's very, very, for me, very encouraging is that uh, the way he loved us and he gave everything for us. So for me, it's been da a daily sacrifice to save others, even though when I am not doing good, I'm sick, or sad, the cross always brings me, helps me to remember the pain that he endured for us. And it helped me because it gives me the urgency and the love for others. And I am very grateful because through that uh, sacrifice that he's shown for us, he help it helps me to go and sacrifice for others, right? I'm very grateful to have here one sister that I baptized is Erin. We baptized her in the East. Thank you, Davis. You know, Jesus uh, simply say in verse 53, Do you think I cannot call on my Father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? His heart was totally, I mean, committed to do God's will at any cost. Yeah. And these, as my wife shared, inspire us to do the same. We are very weak. And we really need God and the Holy Spirit to push through so, to so many situations. Uh, in my life, physically, uh, I, we all don't know. But at least that I know Satan is trying to kill me physically at least three times. Oh, yeah. But spiritually, I lost count. So much hits, so many situations, so many temptations to give up. And when I remember the cross, I said, like, no, I'm not. Because if Jesus give it all for me, I'm willing to give it all. For him. Come on, bro. Yeah. And I'm hoping it was hard. And uh, when even little situations like 
driving a little extra to help somebody who is yeah. weak and spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. Even a little bit, like, like just sleep at two hours less in order to study the Bible with somebody that needs to be saved. Yeah. Just a little bit, like, just wake up early to be respectful to God and be early at church service. Come on, come on. You guys, I want to inspire everybody to never forget what Jesus did for us yeah. and really push yourself yeah. to really give up everything Come on, for him and for his kingdom. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Let's pray for communion. Amen. God, we are super grateful this morning that we are here. Because yeah. you know, God, how much we need you. Yeah. And just the time to, to remember Jesus and the cross and just uh, remember that he gave it all voluntarily to save every single one of us. And just to remember that it was that easy. It was so difficult for him. Mm. But he made a decision because he loves us unconditionally. God, we pray that, that, that you help us to repent of whatever we need to repent of today, right now. So we can just live a life that pleases you and that we can be inspired and get power from Jesus and from the cross so we can live the life that you intended us to live. Yes. God, help us to, to save as much as possible, to live a life that every day, every hour, every second, we're thinking about that. Yeah. And we're giving all we have to make it happen. God, I pray that, that you bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine that represents Jesus' body and Jesus' blood. And the God, that when we pass it hand by hand, that we just see Jesus yeah. dying for us. Yeah. We pray in the name that is above any other name, yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Um, at this time, I have the privilege um, and honor to speak about contribution. Uh, so, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. Easily one of the more profound statements Jesus makes in the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. So, let's look at uh, Matthew 22. Turn our Bibles to Matthew 22. And we're going to look in uh, verse 15 through 22. And the Bible reads, Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his work, words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. Wow. So here we see Jesus, right? They're trying to, we have the... The Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, the, I mean, um, Herodians, they're trying to trap Jesus, you know, um, by using one of the things that we all value, we, we could say has a, a very large value in our lives, money, yeah. right? We, we all need money for, to, to sustain and live in this life that we live. Yeah. And money is very controversial. So they use this thing that they thought they were going to trap Jesus with. But here we see Jesus answers in a way that allows them to think about, okay, what is Caesar's and what is God's? So we know that this coin, right, that he's specifically speaking about right here, has an image of Caesar's, and he says this is Caesar's. It belongs to Caesar, right? Um, but then he goes on and he says, but give to God what is God's. So that leaves us thinking, right? What is God's? So Let's flip to uh, Psalms 24, verse 1, real quick. Okay. And um, we're going to have a little perspective right here. Uh, what is God's? Help us out in our giving today. All right, so um, it says in verse 1, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who lives in it. There you have it, right? So, so, all right. So we know that this coin belongs to Caesar, but according to the scripture, everything is God's. Not just, you know, not just the, the coin that says we, we belong to God. Our possessions belong to God. Our finances belong to God. So when we became disciples, we all made a decision that we were going to give a percentage and, and whatever is on our heart to give. So, now I'm challenging those, there's some here who hasn't been, I guess, true to that commitment. Yeah. So I want to challenge those right there from this scripture right here. It says to give to God what is God. Are you going to hold back what is God's and keep it to yourself? Or are you going to give it back? You know, um, knowing that what we're doing is to build God's kingdom. Yeah. The money's not going towards no, no one's pockets. You don't see no pastor in a jungle plane uh, riding a <laughs> Bugatti, you know? Um, you know? And it's amazing because I personally know these guys and I've been to some of their houses and I can tell you for a fact, this is not where the money goes. Um, so, we know that everything is God's, right? So, in my pocket, I have this silver coin. Oh, I have it. 
everybody's hearts, Father God, who may be struggling with giving, um, just to trust you, Lord, and know that you are God, that you will bring, be the one to um, give everything to what they, what give them everything they need, Father God, to be the one who provide for their every need, God. God, um, I pray that the money, Father God, as we um, give God, goes towards those who really need it, Father God, those who are out there fighting the battle out in these third world countries right now, um, out in um, Dubai, in Lagos, and all around the world, Father, um, that we can help our brothers and sisters so we can uh, spread the gospel and evangelize the world in this generation, Father. Um, continue to be with us in a powerful way, Lord God. We give back to you what is yours, and we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
All right, everyone, we're gonna head back to our seat and start our service again.
awesome. It is so good to be here this morning. I, uh, if I appear or come across at times a bit emotional, please forgive me. I am approaching 55 years of age now. I'm getting older, a little sensitive, and things just mean differently. So seeing all your faces, so many that are familiar, and all the new ones, that makes me a little emotional. But I am happy and honored and glad to be here with you today. Uh, greetings from Chicago. Yeah. And of course, uh, some of the folks that have gone to help make Chicago what it is now. Greetings from Pat and Pam. Pat and Sparkle. Welcome to the Ring of Carissa Kale. Eric and Jim Gaming. And then it's just a whole host of them that send you their greetings and their love to tell you how much they miss you and love you and thank you for building up and making it able for them to go out into the mission field. Uh, in this holiday season, what a great gift it is to be with you. Uh, to have my mom sitting here is a great gift. Uh, we've had a rough go, but to have her here today, I'm so excited. And I want to thank all of you that have spent time with her. You have made a difference in her faith, her joy. Uh, your prayers have made a difference. Some of the faces that I saw right away, Wendy and Hector, thank you so much for being up here. I didn't know it was Kendrick, Kendrick Lord, he bought her chocolate. Birthday cake, they do. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> All right, you got to stop at the front desk and make sure she can eat that stuff. And my mom was always going, shut up. Let him bring the cake in. <laughs> but Ramisha, as well as being the leaders, thank you, John and Kim, and those that have gone up to see my mom. You know, when you take care of one's family members, you, you, you take care of the family. Yeah. And I am so thankful. Uh, I'm very thankful to John and Emma uh, with all my heart. Uh, thank you for your prayers. My prayers go out to you in, in, in your loss here, your family. Uh, but I also really want to thank you guys for being instrumental in me becoming a Christian wow. on November 14, 1990. Yeah. And, uh, although John was a good study partner and, you know, a bunch of brothers there and everything, he was good. Emma actually humbled. <laughs> she, she, you know, I was proud of what he said. Well, not quite. Oh, she made my I mean, I don't think I was proud Oh, come on. Come on, come on mama. She's taking up her feet and everything, you know. But, uh, Emma was funny because she was short. <laughs> but she looked up at me in the kitchen and said, can, can I talk to you? And I think, you know, it was her humility in which she approached me that was a mirror to my own pride. I really appreciate that very, very much. And um, it is just awesome to be back here in Los Angeles. I, John is right. I, I had no intentions of doing anything. And I just wanted to spend time with my mother, uh, my sister, and my incredible grandbaby, Amber. Come on. Um, and of course, my daughter, uh, Amber. Uh, but then when John uh, asked me to go, I said, John, I won't do this anywhere else. <coughs> but I will come to the Southland Metro Heights. I will come to be here. Yeah, my family. And I appreciate you and Emma taking care of them and leading them and loving them. And said, of course, I will be there. So bear with me as I had to put some thoughts together. Uh, I didn't, you know, those that know me know I like to prepare extensively. So I didn't have a lot of time, but I have some things on my heart uh, during this holiday season to really share with you. And I want you to know that the whole, my whole objective for today is for you to look at where you're at Bag all of everything going around you, distractions and everything, all, anything that may be happening in your life, the holidays, the commercials, the whole thing that has nothing to do with Jesus. 
And just ask yourself a question. Am I growing in the Lord? Okay. Am I getting better? I make a commitment each year as I approach the end of it that at this time, the following year, I'm going to be even a different man than I am today. Yeah. Amen. Because if I don't continue to grow, then I'm dying. Yeah. And all we Christians don't look at that. We get into our fellowship. We get into so much. But are you, as an individual in Christ, yeah. as one that will go for the Lord by yourself, yeah. without anyone else around, are you growing in Jesus Christ? Oh, because he is returning. And the biggest trickery of Satan is to know our senses to the fact that Jesus is going to return. And I want to be ready. I'm a sinful guy in my nature. I have to constantly work on who I am and what I have to become in Christ. Because I don't want him to show up and I'm not ready. Holiday Reflection is the title of this lesson. Come on. Come on. Holiday Reflection. Let me read you a poem. Come on, Corey. T'was the night before Jesus came, and all through the house, not a creature was praying, not one in the house. Their Bibles were laying on the shelf without care in hopes that Jesus would not come there. The children were dressing to crawl into bed, not once ever kneeling or bowing ahead. And mom in her rocker with baby on her lap was watching the late show while I, while I took a nap. When out of the east there arose such a clatter, I sprang to my feet to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash to open the shutters and threw up the sash. When what to my wondering eyes should appear, but angels were claiming that Jesus was here. With a light like the sun sending forth a bright day, bright ray, I knew in a moment this must be the day. The light of his face made me cover my head. It was Jesus returning, just like he said. And though I possessed worldly wisdom and wealth, I cried when I saw him in spite of myself. In the book of life, life, which he held in his hand, was written the name of every saved woman and man. He spoke not a word as he reached for my name. When he said, it's not here, my head hung in shame. The people whose names have been written with love, he gathered to take to his father above. For those who were ready, he rose without a sound, but all the rest were left standing around. I fell to my knees, but it was too late. I had waited too long and thus sealed my fate. I stood and I cried as they rose out of sight. Oh, if only I had been ready tonight. In the words of this poem, the meaning is clear. The coming of Jesus is drawing near. There's only one life, and when he comes, the last call, we'll find the Bible was true after all. When I was reflecting, what can I say in such a short time? I've worked really hard to get the sermons trimmed down, you know. But what can I say? What could I say? What could I, what meaning? Because like John, I believe that to do anything in the church, you must move God to do it. Yeah. And so the message must be Christ-centered yeah. for it to have an impact. Yeah. But I did, I thought about many things. I thought about this ministry starting in 2011 in my mom's living room. I thought about the nine courageous souls that are now spread out all over the country and serving. I thought about our first baptism. Where's Johnny? And our second one, Veronica. I thought about number three and four, 
Tony, Eric, and Jim, but I took them with me. <laughs> How this ministry grew to be the largest in LA. I thought about all the New Year's celebrations. Y'all remember those? Oh, and yeah. The talent shows and everything that was going on. I thought about all the weddings, so many weddings. <laughs> I can't wait to get back on the 17th because we're going to do our first wedding in Chicago. I'm so fired up about that. Oh. <laughs> I thought about even the memorial celebrations, oh. how much fun they were oh. sending Christians off the glory. Oh. I thought about all the parties we had in all the houses and all the fruit yeah. that was born. So many of you, I remember your faces coming out of the water yeah. of baptism. I thought about when we moved into the church down there on Parade, what is that, Marina Parade? Yeah. Some of y'all remember when we went there, we had like three cars. <laughs> we didn't have no cars in the ministry. Both in about a year or so, we had to get to church early to get a parking space, or you had to go park on the other side. Yeah. I thought about how each of you were doing. Are you going in Christ? I know you have a wonderful leader. Y'all are done. You know, you know, you stack them around, see if the legal's in here, and the Gonzalez is up in the air. All they know, I'm like, man, they done bought some of everybody up in here. I'm like, it's a bad boy right here. Look, y'all, he set up for victory, man. I'm like, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I did think, are they growing? As I think about Christians there in Chicago, as I think about the Christians in New York, or one of the 12 Crown Thrones churches, or any of the other 73 churches we have in the over 34 nations. Are we growing? Are we growing in three areas? We'll talk about this in a moment. But are you growing in your personal life? We've all been given different gifts of God. Are we growing in them? Are we growing in our spiritual life? Are we overcoming that which should subject us to hell if we don't? Have we developed personal ministries to the glory of God? Reflection is good. This time of year, I reflect a lot and I ask myself these three questions that I want to be answered in the affirmative year by year. Am I living a full life? Am I merely existing as a Christian, but am I living a full Life. I don't know if you guys seen the movie. There's a movie out. Roman J. Israel. Anybody seen that movie? Some of y'all seen it? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to go see it. It's a, it's a kind of movie you can go to. You ain't got to worry about bad in it. But it's the story of, a, of a, a lawyer. And this guy was in a two-person two, part, two person firm. So there's another guy who went in front of everybody. And he was the guy behind the scenes. But he was the one with the real integrity. He was an advocate for injustice. He was the one that did this research and put it all together. He was basically in obscurity. No one knew who he was, yet he was the juice in the firm. This went on for 35 years. And then the partner that was out front dies. That partner had control of the firm with his family. So when that partner dies, the family decides they want to shut down the practice and they bring in someone to do it. And now, Roman is out of a job. It starts to reason on him that he has spent his life doing good, fighting injustice, being an advocate, volunteering, doing all these things, and yet making very little money. There comes a situation that he could really gain a financial gain right here, but it would require him to go against the ethics of law. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he decides to take that up. And so he gets his financial gain, and he now has the wealth. He's starting to live the life. He's looking good, you know, and all these things. Only for it to come back on him and to be found out what's in the dark for the light. And so, now it comes back on him and he decides, you know what? I need to turn myself in. But before he can do it, he's killed. He's killed. Before he can actually change it. You know, what does this story have to do with growing? 
Because you may feel like you've been working really hard to grow in these areas. You may feel like you haven't gotten the game that you want. You may feel like you haven't grown the way you want. Maybe everything has not gone your way. But no matter what, till the very end, we are called to live the kind of life that God has called us to. Yeah, come on. And cannot, we cannot be swayed by money, things, distractions, health issues. <coughs> Nothing can distract us. And so I want to use for the basis of my, past, my, my, my text passage today. I want to look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. Chapter 4. I don't know, like I said, I'm getting older. Some, sometimes I like to read from the, uh, like Elena, I like to read from the Message Bible. Come on, Corey. Yeah, that's all right. yeah you read it too, don't you? Know? <laughs> you know, they're, 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 they say very similar, but I think it brings a little light what's going on. Oh, yeah. Paul's talking to young Timothy here. And he's telling him what is to come. You that look to be in leadership, understand what is to come. Understand the opposition that will come your way. Not so much from your brothers and sisters, but from Satan himself. For when you can attack and win that battle over them, you have hurt the faith of men. Always, guys, Bible talk leaders, all you guys, all you in leader positions, always hold that place sacred and holy and reverent. And all that you do, your motive is to bring God glory. Do you know the greatest sin that there is? Is to live a life that doesn't bring God glory. Yeah. Oh yeah, sin is sin, but when your life does not bring glory to God, that is the most atrocious thing. One that died for you to do something. Read with me here, verse 1. The Spirit makes it clear that as time goes on, some are going to give up. Listen to this. They're going to give up the faith and chase after demonic illusions put forth by professional liars. And you know, in your, some of your translations says hypocritical liars. These are like folks that actually once were in the faith, you know? Yeah. And they become professional now at the lie. But it's two ways to look at this. They become professional liars, yeah, and hypocrites. That's the do something different than what you preach, but there are also those that have walked away from the faith. They're conscious, it says here. They said, they lie, they lie so well and for so long that they've lost their capacity for truth. They will tell you not to get married, they will tell you not to eat this or that food, partly good food. God created to be eaten partly and with thanksgiving. Everything God created is good. I want to camp here for a moment. <laughs> if you are going to grow and thus fill this room, and it should be your goal, yeah. fill this thing up as quick as possible. Don't look at it going, no, no, fill it up yeah. <clears throat> with saved souls. But if you're going to do that, you have to understand that everything that God created is good. You're good. If you doubted yourself on that, stop. You are good. Yeah. Yeah. And so you receive each other with thanksgiving. Right. Mm. I'm so glad to be in the kingdom of God. I receive all the brothers and sisters with thanksgiving, with a glad and sincere heart. Uh, that's what we are. Everything. Look to each other. Look to the right. Look to the other. Say, you are good. You are good. You are good. You know why that's important that you do so? You know why it's important that you do so? Because I know many of you were raised here and you were no good. Every shortcoming about you was told to you. You can't be nothing. You ain't nothing. And God said that's a lot. Everything I created is good and I created you. Verse 6, it says, You've been raised on the message of faith. Now, this is what, what you, you become Christian, you have a message of faith. <laughs> and have followed sound teachings, you've been taught well. Now pass on this to other followers of Jesus. Then you will be a good minister. 
If you want to be a good minister, the Bible calls us all ministers and yeah. Then you pass on sound teaching yeah. Yeah. that is full of faith. Yeah. You guys follow me here? Yeah. Stay clear of silly stories that get dressed up as religion. Exercise daily in God. No spiritual flabbiness. <laughs> Please, work out. The gyms are useful, but a disciplined life in God is far more. So making you fit both today and forever. You can count on this. Take it to heart. This is why we have thrown ourselves and why we labor and strive into this venture so totally. We're banking on the living God, Savior of all men and women, especially the disciples. He says this to Timothy. He says, so get this word out. So in other words, he command and teach these things. And then he says, set them an example. In this translation, it says, show them by your demeanor. In love and in faith and integrity. And he says, stay at your post. In other words, be on guard reading scripture, giving counsel, teaching. And that special gift of ministry you were given when the leaders of the church lay hands on you, we don't know what that is exactly. But we're told to use your gifts. Come on. Come on, bro. He says, keep that dusted off and in use. Now cultivate. Cultivate is a little different than the old traditional translation. It means to bring to life, to develop, to make strong, to grow. These things, immerse yourself or persevere, you know the passage, in them. Now here it is, that people will see your maturity. That's verse 15, and it says so that your progress may be seen. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching, your life and doctrine. Don't be diverted, or in other words, persevere in them. Just keep at it, don't quit. Both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. I am moved by this passage. You know, Timothy, now, when it says to men and teach these things and don't let them look down on you because you're young, during this time frame, youth could be up to like 40 years old. So Timothy's growing in him. He'd be like 40 years old. So we out of the job. That ain't us. You know. <laughs> He ain't talking to us no more. It might be called one of you young folks. He ain't talking to us no more, you know. Well. <laughs> but this whole passage says, look, Timothy, okay, look, this is what's going to really happen. This, this is a matter of fact. This is what's going to happen. There are going to be people that come, and, and, and they're going to teach things that are actually taught by Satan. Wow. What this denotes for us is that the battles that we have are not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of this dark world. Yeah. And so as we view and see what's happening, we have to understand the spiritual ramifications of not having great faith yeah. in the word of God. Yeah. And he says, so you gotta, dude, you gotta, you gotta teach. But not only teach, you can't just talk about these things, but you gotta walk in them. Yeah. If you say you have great faith, yeah. then you must walk in John 2, verse 6, if you claim to be in him, then you what? You must walk as Jesus did. Are you in Jesus? Then you must walk as Jesus did. So let me, let me clear it up. Let me clear it up. Because I know a lot of people think walking like Jesus is. Okay. Clear it up, bro. Now it's good we have communion and we can repent of our sins. Alright? Get that stuff out. Right? We can deal with it. So, but most of us have a wrong concept. We think Walking with Jesus is giving up our sin. <laughs> that ain't walking like Jesus. Jesus never sinned. <laughs> he ain't did one sin. You giving up your sin is only bringing you into your salvation. <laughs> it ain't walking like Jesus. <laughs> to walk like Jesus, you must walk as he did. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Mark 10 says he came to serve and not be served. Right? Yeah, that's right. To offer his life as a ransom for many. Now that's walking like Jesus. You're right. Have you grown? Come on. Have you grown? Come on, grown. That's what I'm growing, Jesus. These three areas.
promise John I'm going to keep myself about 30 minutes here. But those three areas. Have you grown? Number one, personal. The Bible says he has stooped down to make you great. What does that mean? Great is what? Great is what he's giving you. As a Christian, we are personally to be great. Great at work. Great as a student. Great as a servant. Whatever it is you do, you're to be great for God. Because when you're great and you say, I'm a Christian, you bring glory to God because you also state where you got the power to be great from. There's no such thing as a Christian. Come on, brother. The Bible says you have a new life. Yeah. Your old life may have been mediocre. Your old life may have been undisciplined, without character, but not your new life. Come on. You're to be great. To build a great church, many people must grow up and be great. That's right. Because in that, you attract the world. Remember what he told Timothy here? He says, command to teach, but even better yet, set them an example. You want to convert people? You want to bring people to the Lord? Set them an example. Yeah. Set them an example. Prioritize your Christian life. What you do is to bring greatness to your Christian life to glorify your Father in heaven. Who's the best student you know, college folks? Well, he's the best ever. Now, I'll tell you something about my mom. I didn't have to be the greatest student. But I had to give greatest effort. There's a time when I got a lower grade. I'm, I'm a pretty educated guy. There's a time when I got a lower grade. I didn't get in trouble unless I said I didn't do my best. There's trouble to pay. There's basketball games to be missed. It's something you just didn't do in my house growing up. You didn't have an effort. You were going to be great. I was always told that from a young man. You're going to be great. You're going to work hard. You're going to be good at whatever you do. When I said, Mom, I want to play in the NBA, she said, you're going to play? You're going to work hard. When I had cut from my first season, that's all right. You keep working. Come on. Come on. Now ask yourself, how today are you bringing Glory to God in your personal life. Yeah. Okay. Now, second point, spiritual life. It's different. You can be great, amen, but if that's all you do is gain stuff out of the world and be great, but, you know, you haven't grown in God, <laughs> then, then, you know, what good is it you gain all that you lose your over your very soul, right? So now your spiritual life. I think Christians mess around too much. Okay, bro. They mess around. You know, from day one, when I studied the Bible with John and them, what did change me was that you are in the dark. Not only physically did I sit up in a room that was dark, but I had a heart that was even darker. And when I realized that, and it dawned on me, I can't live like this. No, no, no. Better yet, I can't die like this. And I studied and was baptized at 1.30 in the morning. Wow. That's how urgently it yeah. became. Yeah. I remember talking to Bill Hamilton. And Bill, Bill, Bill was like, we're going to get a study tomorrow. I'm like, no, we ain't. <laughs> now, I went through all this stuff, and you, John, everybody that told me I'm lost and going to hell. <laughs> what are you talking about tomorrow? You got to be out your mind. But I am educated, brother. Trust me. I learned well. We get baptized tonight. I will cut me a hole down the road. I was baptized in a horse trough at 1.30 in the morning at Nicole's house in a ride at about 20 degrees out of the road. You remember that? It was cold. I was standing in the fridge and it was cool. I was going to walk you down the road. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And I wasn't lost no more. I wasn't in the dark. I was fired up. And it was the best Dunkin' Donuts and coffee I ever ate, my life. Now check this out. 
But did I grow? Well, I've had challenges in my life. Many of you know the stories. There have been challenges. But always there must be a decision to repent and grow. Romans 6, 24. Your spiritual life is available through the grace of God. Now, how much Bible you learn? It is simply a gift from God to be cherished. Your Bible is a gift. People in your life calling you higher is a gift. It's a gift. Sometimes we can look at somebody in our lives and disciple us and do it and be like, what are you doing? Get out of my Get out of my business. It's a gift to have them. These brothers that wouldn't give up, even the women like them that would stand up to my pride, this was a gift. What is wrong to say? What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? No! We are those who have died to sin. And how can we live it any longer? But don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life, which your life new. And be in a new day. Don't forget this phrase. If you're not growing, you're dying. Come on. What is quiet time for? What is Bible study for? If it's not to make you grow, it ain't for hold you accountable to look at a book. <laughs> Come on, Corey. I get man, I care less if you do your quiet time at four in the morning. Right. I care that you get time with God. Yeah. I care that you get in his presence. Mm-hmm. I care that you repent before him. Yeah. I care that you're open. I care that you think more of what God thinks than you do of anyone else. That's what I care. I've told him, in this Metro Heights now, I'm a South Lynn man. I, I, I told y'all many times, I'm never here to make y'all happy, but to make you holy. Yes. Oh, oh, to be separated, to be used yeah. by God. Like me or like me not, I'm here to make you. I hope you like it. Come on, bro. I love y'all. 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 It's no doubt about it. And it's been awesome hearing stories of many of you. You know, as I look on the internet and I see in Facebook and see you guys just posting, some of you guys, uh, you know, Johnny Veronica was number one, number two, but to see them like being shepherds and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know how John ripped me a little bit in 1990, he was a guest in the show, that would be. There's a part. Baby's bad, having one baby, having the next baby, having the next baby, having the next baby. I asked him today, I said, y'all done? He said, yeah, we done. <laughs> Said we are done. <laughs> Finding or using a new life in the church to inspire people to be awesome for the Lord. To believe that they could believe, be something they never thought they could be. It's quiet in here right now. <laughs> I'm talking about a faith. Let me tell you something about your, 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 your dreams. If they don't require a miracle of God, otherwise God's hand, you're too late. Wow. I fully believe we'll evangelize the Middle East. I fully believe we'll evangelize the Midwest. I have no doubt we'll evangelize and there'll be thousands in the city of Chicago church. None! Because I'm going beyond my own faith level and believing God. Is your dreams big enough? Come on, bro. Help us out. Grace has saved you. Spend your life glorifying God. Amen. Spend the whole thing. Have no change left over. Finally, your personal ministry. I think this is uh, the area that needs more teaching for us. 
We hear oftentimes that I need to go evangelize. I need to study the Bible with some people, right? I need to, the Bible never says that. The Bible does say you have the ministry of reconciliation as though God was making what? His appeal through whom? You. So you have your own ministry per se. Do you have one? Matthew 28, the Great Commission, which is so many of these scriptures that we have that are foundational for us in the movement even, because they're so often used, are like cliches. Right. So we read stuff like, Jesus said, all authority in heaven was given, me, given to me. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Do you know what that means? <laughs> you got the answer to him. And then he used this transitionary phrase. So therefore, this becomes transitionary. Now it's not a suggestion, but a what? A command. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That means none of you got none. <laughs> and I would just, you know, been on this cross. And I just took a whooping for you. I'm going to tell you what I want you to do now. Right. Therefore. <laughs> therefore. He says, go. Get out of here. Yeah. Stop standing around watching me. <laughs> go and make what? Disciples. Now, to make a disciple, you have to what? Be a disciple. He says, then do what with them? <laughs> Baptize them. Why are you not tired? Y'all don't let me be. Be born again. Why are you not Don't say that like you don't know why. So that be forgiven of their sins. And then he says another thing. And then do what? Teach them obey what? Of who? That he commanded. You missed that part. Teach them obey everything. No, no, no. I don't need you to obey me. I make it easier. My personality is to your benefit. But I want you to obey everything he has commanded. And then he says, then I will what? Be with you. Always. Always. To win. To the very end of the age. Correct. Okay, so what is a personal ministry? It's two concepts here. It is one, who are you bringing to Christ? Go make disciples and baptize. Who are you bringing to Christ? It's quiet. Because when I'm done with this point, I want you to name your personal ministry. Who are you bringing to Christ? The second concept of it is who are you maturing in Christ? What? Teaching them to obey everything. How are you disciplining them, pouring your life into them? Where are you doing that? My buddy. So it's just two simple concepts. Who are you bringing? Who are you maturing? Now, I know that there are times when you don't feel like God is with you. Come on, raise your hand. I would bet in most of those times you don't have a personal ministry. Because he says in that ministry, he says what? I am with you always. Tell them they're in the age, right? So if I got no ministry, ooh, there could be other implications. Why? Because now I'm disobedient to the therefore. Yeah. Come on, Corey. Now I'm disobedient to the therefore, the command. Come on, bro. So this, these are all parts of a, a series, but these are three areas that I believe the Christian must focus on. That I want to leave you with. So what I've done over these last years, it is why I can stand today. It is a focus. You want to be an evangelist? You want to speak and you got to work at that. I tell you, you don't just get up here and start speaking. No. <laughs> you don't. I see dudes trying. Yeah. You start on the back. You know it, right? <laughs> Can you, can you do a Bible talk good when you get up here? I'm just saying. <laughs> you want to be a leader? 
Are you a good servant? Little, are you a servant? The greatest work I've done in ministry is serve my people. After about five, six thousand presentations, the pulpit becomes kind of easy, don't you? The greatest, the, the, the biggest thing is that you stay serving. I love being evangelist, but that's not my goal of life. Be a great servant of the Lord and to His people. So remember these three things as I close out. Number one, personal life. How's it going? Remember, Timothy was told to grow and to show his progress and to watch what he goes out and says match against what he does because it's going to save himself and everybody that sees in here. Your personal life, your spiritual life. You've got undealt with sin. John's right. I'm scared of God in that way. We trivialize him. We want all of his blessings. We want all of them. But we forget about his judgment. And your personal ministry, the biggest area I think, is still in the faith of Christians that way. Because that is not about just going out and, hey, come church. That's about pouring yourself into somebody. Yeah. Doing as Jesus did for you. So in conclusion, understand these things will happen. Because it's by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. Not by works. So that none of us can boast. For we are God's handiwork. Another translation says God's masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works that he has prepared in advance. Are you wrong? Come on, man. So this holiday season, reflect. Yeah. Reflect. And then answer. The good thing about Jesus, you can start growing whenever you want to. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Is this your repentance? Yeah. And a plan. Get with growing. It's in your life. Make a plan for growth. Come on. But let this not be a holiday season. Or a time in your life where Jesus returns if he does. You're not ready. Wow. Let there be no shame when he looks for your name in the book of life. God bless you. Everybody thought I was six feet. 
Because that's what I told them. I'm an inch tall, I would say. Don't make up growth. Some of us spiritually are making up growth. You've added an inch. Some of you have added a foot. You have no shame. Somebody come up and ask you how you're doing, and you say, I'm doing great. And you added a foot to your growth. Don't make up growth in your life. The great news about being a Christian is we don't have to be short people. Amen, Amen short people. Amen, Mason. Like Corey said, all disciples can be spiritual giants. Are you with me right there, church? You know, I, mean, I, I thought he just, I, you know, he, he didn't hold back at all. I mean, he took a regular Christian poem and turned it into a massacre. <laughs> Were you in that holiday poem? Oh, man. You got there late? Some of you today are late. If you died today, you wouldn't make it to heaven. Jesus coming back would terrify you. You're going to be asked to study today. Come on. If you're in that situation, please take the invitation. Now, I love the three points about how we're growing in our personal lives. The next three weeks, more, more people, people in our church and in most churches do the worst spiritually during yes, holidays. They do. Yeah. You're going to find out what kind of Christian you are in the next three weeks. Satan has already begun shooting the arrows. There are things that are happening in some of our lives, just this last, you know, just within the last two weeks, Kip's father passed. We were having a detail time with the Petersons. My wife's sister passed away right during the detail. time. The phone rang, my wife went back and answered it and I just heard a scream and her sister was gone. We had another sister that, that lost a baby this week. John 10, Satan has come to kill and destroy. We talked a couple weeks ago about the shield of faith and all the flaming arrows, not just one arrow coming. I mean, the sky is full of arrows that are going to be coming at you and at me. Are we going to have the personal shield of faith up in our lives? Somebody's going to get shot in the heart over the next three weeks. You're going to be walking around without your shield. The arrow's going to come and it's just going to shoot you in the heart. You know the decisions and what you decide today is what you'll do tomorrow. And I want to encourage you today that, you know, my personal life with God is going to be incredible over the next three weeks. I am not going to be that one. It's not going to be me. We come back after the holiday break. I want to see every seat in here full. I don't want to see anybody missing. I don't want to go, well, well, well where's Moses? Well, what happened to Kevin? That, that contribution was amazing. But what happened to Kevin? Kevin's like, why are, you, why are you throwing me under the bus? <laughs> <laughs> Satan wants to kill. Yes, he does. And he wants to destroy. We've got to walk like Jesus during the holidays. We've got to serve. We've got to give. You're going to know what kind of Christian you are. And you know what else? Your family is going to know what kind of Christian you are as well. Number two, your, our spiritual life. Thank you for sharing that point. Our spiritual lives. How are we going to do spiritually? How many of us are committed to not missing one quiet time over the next three Come on, weeks? Bro. 
and give out for everybody in there. I'm not missing one. My applause. I'm not missing one. Fire time. You've got to be great at repenting during the holidays. You're going to be around a lot of sin. It's amazing how much people sin on Jesus' birthday. <laughs> Drinking. I appreciate that 2018 is going to be the year of grace. Yes. And let me tell you something. We need to tap into the grace of God. What is grace? It's, it's unmerited favor. Yeah. It's God giving you something that you don't deserve. But do you go on sinning so that grace may increase? By what? No means. We die to sin. How can we live in it any longer? And some of you just need to get humble and tap into the grace today. You need to quit trying to justify yourself. You need to stop making excuses for where you are and what you've done. You know, as Corey said so profoundly, you've been sitting in the dark, and you just need to decide today, the grace of God is right there for me. I'm getting up out of the dark, and I'm walking out of here. And then finally, you know, just, just our personal <coughs> ministry. Do I, do I have a ministry? For some of you as baby Christians, this is going to be your first time home for the holidays. And, and your family is your personal ministry. I remember after I got baptized. Way, 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 long, long time ago. <laughs> oh. And I, I remember going home as a 19-year-old disciple for the first time. I grew up in a family where my, my grandfather was a Protestant minister. He planted churches all over Indiana, Ohio, Chicago, and Nebraska. He had six sons. Five of them were ministers. My grandmother, uh, after he had passed away, was, uh, was a spiritual matriarch in our family. We all got the Christian. I went home as a 19-year-old, and, and I pulled out the, not, not just the whole, I pulled out the whole fire hydrant, and I just... I told everybody they were lost to go in the hell. What are y'all doing? Decades of false teaching have infiltrated you. Repent for the kingdom of God is here. My family was ready to put me into the same asylum. They were like, my, my uncle, I'll never forget, my, my one uncle uh, uh, told me that that's the worst education you've ever gotten at that university. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me years to undo the damage that I caused. Because my gospel was full of salt and seasoned with grace. And yet the Bible says that the gospel should be full of grace and seasoned with salt. And over the years, I was able to baptize my mother, my brother, my three sisters, my brother-in-law. It took some time to get that salt out of there. But I thank God for that. And Corey's right, guys. We've got to go home and serve our family. Yeah. That was the ministry of Jesus, to serve and to lay his life down for many. And your family is going to see what kind of Christian you are. Never underestimate the impact that you can have. My mother was baptized over Christmas holiday. When I went home that first summer, my mom told me, she said, you will never convert me, young man. <laughs> <laughs> and we converted her over Christmas holiday. Oh, we set an example for Jesus. We came home one Christmas and my mother said, will you study the Bible with me? I started filling her head. I didn't know what was going on with my mother. She said, will you study the Bible with me? I said, absolutely. And we baptized her that year. Who are you bringing to Christ 
and who are you keeping in Christ? I appreciate Matthew 18, uh, 28, 18 chorus. Who are you bringing to Christ? You know, if I were to ask today, let's show a, have a show of hands of, of everybody that brought somebody to Christ this year. With every hand, no, you don't have to do it. <laughs> All our private people. <laughs> I'll ask you next year. How about that? Can I give everybody a year's notice? Yeah. All right. Next year during this time, our last service of the year, I'm going to ask everybody, how many people did you bring to the Lord? Amen? Amen. Right. So we won't ask it today. Put your hand. Bro, put your hand. <laughs> so, you know, if I were to ask that question, how, how many hands would go up? How many of you could say, you know what, God used me this year, a whole year, 365 days, 52 weeks. God used me this year to bring somebody to the Lord. Yeah. Somebody's eternal destiny is going to be changed. Every hand should go up if you're a disciple. And how many of us today kept someone in Christ? You know, it's one thing to bring someone to Christ. It's another thing to keep someone in Christ. You know, we're all in our Bible talks. We all have our relationships with each other. We need to take care of each other over the next three weeks. If you see an arrow coming at somebody's heart, throw your shield in front of their chest and protect them. If you see somebody struggling, get in there. Help them. Let's make sure we all make it through the next three weeks. Amen, brothers and sisters. Thank you for the amazing Let's go out. Let's not just hear the word, but let's go out and do the word and put it into practice. Amen, brothers and sisters. God has blessed us. Next Sunday is going to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, we're all going to be at UCLA with all of the family of God. It is going to be an electrifying service next Sunday. So let's all be there. Let's bring our visitors. Let's bring our guests. Let's show them what the whole L.A. church looks like. Amen, brothers and sisters. And then on a, uh, and then on a personal note, I, I want to thank the congregation for all of your prayers and well wishes for our family. Uh, it, it's devastating losing a sibling. Yes. Uh, you, you, you really do think it could never happen. And then in a twinkling of an eye, in a split second, your whole life and your whole family's life can change. Yeah. And, and we, we cried tears for, for three days straight. Uh, we started feeling and, and just accepting it after about the third or fourth day. Uh, we're still hurting. My wife is still hurting over the loss of her sister. She's the one who brought us together. If it wasn't for her, I don't even know if I had it. But she's the one who said, hey, he's okay. Go <laughs> on <laughs> and get with him. <laughs> so please be praying for us. This next week's going to be very difficult. Uh, we need you. Thank you. Uh, please pray for her family. Pray for her. Let's all rise and pray and we'll be dismissed. Cole, come up and lead the prayer, bro. I can't do it. Come on, Cole. Come on, Cole. That's what you get for being a baby prayer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Father, even today, uh, I thank you that we're able to be here today. Yes. And we're able to listen to these great stories of Corey. Father, I just pray that we'll take these challenges really to heart. Yes, sir. And that there's so many things that we're going to so many problems and so many things we're going to face yeah. coming this Christmas, Father. I pray that you just keep us strong yeah. and keep all the disciples very close, Father. Yeah. And just if we see anyone that's struggling, just really reach out to them, Father. Yes, and I pray for John's family, Father. Just, uh, just understand that we are praying for him and that you just watch over them, Father. Thank you. And his prayers that, Father, we still hear us today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen.